Lunch, a Toucan in Fruit Acrylic Painting, Part 7. Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you part 7 and the last part of the tutorial portion of my toucan and fruit painting or lunch. So this one is going to be two little insects, there's a ladybug up in the top corner and a green rose chafer beetle on the crate. So I love insects, I've always loved insects, and I'm actually shocked I've never painted them before. So I was really excited to work on insects. I've painted arachnids in the past, but never, never an insect. So I thoroughly enjoyed painting these and I wanted to spend a little bit more time on them. That's why they're the only two pieces in this video. Spend a little bit more time working on the little bugs. So I hope you like that and don't forget to check out all the previous videos. There are six of them that I showed you to work on this painting as well as a time lapse video. And those are all in the description box below. And don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So I'm going to start with the little ladybug and I'm going to begin with his back and that is going to start with red and I'm just going to basically draw in the shape of his shell. Shell? That's not the right word. His little exoskeleton shell. I'm sure somebody will help me out with the proper word in the description box below. Um, so I'm just going to fill that in with red and then just kind of keep working on it until it's the right shape. And then once I have that, I'm going to be adding some slight highlights on it with some white at the top and then a little bit of burgundy at the bottom, blending that up for the shadow. So it's very subtle, very smooth highlights right there because they're so, they're so reflective that the highlights and the shadows are a little softer almost looking, which doesn't make sense because they're more reflective. The highlights are much more intense, but the lowlights are more, are softer. So then with black paint, I'm going to be adding his thorax and his head just like that just a little bit it's there's not really much there and then I'm also going to just go through and I'm going to be highlighting those by blending in just a tad of white paint don't overdo it don't overdo the highlights they are still black and then add the white spots that are on his head and his thorax so just go through with full strength white and add a couple little spots there and then with black I'm going to be adding the spots on his back so just add those here and there and I was looking at a photo of a ladybug for reference just to make sure that they were in the right placement or they were in the right place and then add a little bit of a highlight along the along his back a little bit more you want to kind of almost make it look like it's in two pieces and that define that line that's in the center this is not I know that I said this is my first time painting insects and it's true but I have I did an illustration of a ladybug that's actually the same ladybug I just did it different and there's going to be some pictures of that on my Instagram page um, just because it, I did it recently, but I was unable to record it. So if you're interested in seeing more ladybugs, definitely check that out and I'll make sure I'll get those posted, posted soon. And then I'm going to go through and just highlight his legs. I added his legs with black and then I'm going to be highlighting them with just a tad of gray. Just not, you don't want to over highlight them because you do want them to still look black, but you need to add just a little bit more dimension to them. So that's the way that I did the, the ladybug. I'm doing the green rose chafer in a completely different technique. So for him, I began with charcoal and I just went and did all of his shapes right from the beginning instead of kind of detailing piece by piece as I went with the ladybug. So I just started out head, thorax, abdomen, and then I'm going to be adding his antenna and then adding the legs. And the reason I did the green rose chafer this way is because he has all of those amazingly iridescent and just gorgeous reflections that he gives off is that you really kind of want to have a base under that so that the highlights don't get too out of hand and mess up the shape. So you want to have that shape in the beginning so that you have the freedom to play with the highlights and the reflections as much as you'd like to. So I'm just going to go through and make sure I add all of those legs. Once again, I'm looking at a photo. All these insects are so ornate that I kind of wanted to make sure that I had a very detailed reference to check back on to make sure that the legs curved in the right way and all of that. So now with very bright green, I'm going to go through and just make sure that I've got sort of the base shapes in there. So I did the two sides of his back and then added, it's got like a little triangle shape right in the center of him and then start blending in other colors. So for him, you got bright green, dark green, blue, and burgundy. Burgundy is kind of the surprising one, but it does show up a little bit on some of that little highlights in there. And green rose chafers are absolutely gorgeous. They are stunning. I had to make sure that I added one of those. If you flip them over, their underside is just as iridescent and gorgeous as their top. So if you've never seen one of those before, definitely do some Googling and look at these gorgeous, gorgeous little insects because they're amazing. So after I have, so I started with his back and I added that and I'm going to be working my way towards his head and with these highlights and I'm going to be adding them on 
now it's I'm working on his thorax when you're doing this I also added just a little bit of yellow in there which I did not mention I'm not doing any white highlights at the moment it's just all of these reflections that he's got so then I'm also going to be adding just hints of that green color on his legs and I have not washed my brush from the last thing I did so not only am I adding little hints of green I'm also adding little hints of whatever color that brush decides to release at the moment that the residue from the rest of it which actually works out pretty well because then you don't have to worry about mixing and the legs are so thin that there's really not space to do that either. And I also did the same thing on his head with just a very slight bit of that green. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm going to have black paint and just outline some of his shapes. And normally in a painting like this, I wouldn't do any outline, but just for him, and especially with those reflections, the outlines do actually just sort of happen naturally. And then I'm going to be adding just a very slight hint of white highlights on him. I'm not going to overdo that because I don't want to distract from those reflections, but just a little bit just to really show off how shiny he is. And then with Deluda black paint, I'm going to go through and add the shadows underneath him. When you're shadowing under his legs, don't add the shadows right along his leg. Add them a little bit from them so that it looks like they're up in the air and they're not flat against the crate. And that is it for these insects. Like I said, I absolutely adore them and I'm sure that if you stick around on my channel you will see me painting them in the future various kinds I have a love of all things creepy crawly and don't forget to check my Facebook and Instagram to see those other few I mentioned and I'll see you in my next video bye